you darn right. It's being recorded because today I have someone on this podcast that I have been an admirer of this man uh, from the first time that I found out about him. I would follow him for racing and I've got to meet him several times and he's always been a gentleman to me and I'm thankful for that. That is Frank Travieso. So if we had a drop that we could clap, <laughs> <laughs> we would do that. Um, I think, Frank, the last time I saw you in person, it's been a while, but it was Tampa. You had just yes. finished the crit, and we had talked for about five, ten minutes. And, again, it always sticks with me. When I get to talk to you, you're always a gentleman. You ask me about my racing. You just were always very nice to me. So I just want to say thank you for coming on the podcast, man. I appreciate it. No, no, it's a... Uh... It's a pleasure to be here, you know, talking to you again. I guess, I guess it's been a while, you know. Yeah. We're talking Facebook, Instagram, but yeah. it's, it's been a while, so we, like, we yeah. talk, like, face-to-face. -face. Yeah. I, I, you know I follow you on Instagram. I'm everything, dude. I'm, I'm a big fan of Frank <laughs> Travieso, so I don't care what anybody says. For this few minutes, I have fanned out, okay? Screw y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know what, Frank? I'm just going to ask, uh, really, I'm curious to find out. These are the things I don't know. How did you get into riding? How did you get into racing a bike? Well, r racing wise, uh, I started riding a bicycle because, you know, my mom and my brother, they were like track and field oh. uh, racers. Yeah, okay. they, they race. My mom raced 100 meters with hurdles. And she, she was like really good at it. Uh, my brother was really good at it too. And to be honest, I don't like to walk. I don't like to run whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sorry. We got to get Frank. Uh, if anybody wants to sponsor him for one of those segues, let's get Frank a segue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't like no, no of those things. So I was like, you know, I want to hang out with y'all, but you know, I don't like this running thing. So they, they got me a bicycle. <laughs> Okay, so when was your first, okay, you started riding, who was your first club, um, who were you riding with, and when was your first race? Well, my first race was back in 1992, wow. was, was my first race uh, back in Cuba, you know, like we did uh, a, a bunch of friends of mine, so like, they were like big riders in those years, and they were like, hey, you want to come to this race, I just went to the race. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, I'm racing. And uh, just. How'd you do? Jump, jump in it. I won the race. Okay. <laughs> so you knew yes. right away. And I was like, all right, this, this is cool. But, you know, at the same time, you know, in those years, if you want to be a cyclist, you're supposed to be part of this cycling academic that I didn't want to be part of uh, at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to be home every day. I just don't want to be stuck in a random school that, you know, they serve you like some weird food and stuff like that. So there was something that I didn't want to do at all. So I just keep racing like randomly. Yeah. Until like pretty much I was like 15, 16 years old that they told me, hey, you know, if you really want to be a cyclist, you have to be in it. It's not like you can just come and race and go and that's it you know like I do it for like a year you know I race like national championships uh, uh we ended up getting second uh in the we did a uh, team pursuit ended up getting second I raced that year and there and then I was like you know this is not for me I, I cannot be stuck in, in a place for the whole week or stuff like that, that I, and I left I, I left the sport I never left the sport well I left I left the school yeah. Uh, I went do my, my own thing. And, and then, you know, I always knew I needed to come to the U.S. Because I was supposed to be in the U.S. in 92. It was, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to get stuck in the school. Because, you know, soon you get stuck in the type of school, you get stuck in the system, you get stuck with the government. And that's something I didn't want to do. I always knew that, you know, when my time comes, I just going to leave the country. I didn't want to be part of anything that had to do anything with the government. So in 98, uh, I came to the U.S., you know, I came to the U.S. like, I didn't know any cyclists in the U.S. at that point. I didn't know anybody. So 
how, how I started racing bikes again. My sister have a friend, uh, his name is uh, Alex Garcia, that, you know, he was a big guy at this point. He was probably uh, maybe 220 pounds at that point. Wow. So he's, he was a big fan of Greg LeMond and, you know, the Tour de France, all this kind of stuff, you know. The only ride I knew about the Tour de France at that point was uh, Miguel and Durant. Because, you know, the, the information in Cuba that we get was not that idea ways, you know. We, we didn't have that much uh, information in there. And he gave me to, like, turn the ride again. He gave me a bicycle. And, yeah, we used to ride at night because, you know, he worked all day. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know anybody. So, I, you know, I go and work in the morning and then go to school. And then he picked me up around 9 o'clock in the night. Uh, we went to this place in Miami. You probably know Kibis King. Oh heck yeah! Come on now. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I know you know. Everybody know. This is a place everybody ride down there. Yep, yep. I, we used to ride at night, man. Like we used to do like two hours every night there, nine, nine to eleven. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so how old were you at that time? Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. I do that from eighteen to nineteen years old. Yeah. Okay, so hold on, stop for a second, because I I, you said something I want to I ask you. Okay, so once you left Cuba, you came, straight, did you came straight to the United States. Did you come straight to Miami? Yeah, I went straight to Miami, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, I, yeah, I lived in Miami for like eight years. Yeah, I was in uh, Miami until like 2006, until yeah. I turned professional. Yes. Yeah. I, I can't remember the team that you turned professional on. What was the name? I, I just remember the kit. It was light blue with some red on it. And it, yes, I, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, out of space to Chiba. Yes, that's what it was. That's yes. what it was. Yeah. Got yes. it. Okay, so you're riding two hours at night. And then where did you go from there? How do, when did you start racing again? Well, I started race uh, this Colombian guy, good friend of mine, that he's on a bike shop. Is the Andante by uh, Cyclo Chop. He's like, hey guys, you know, I like starting a, a put a little team together, and he was one of the guys, you know, because he walked all day to the bike shop. So he see us riding at night there. So he meet up with us at night, some some time in there too. So when I started the race, well, the the first time I went to the group rides. So I went to this group rides. I told my friend, and this point, uh, uh, I don't remember the motorcycle. I don't remember what the bike show was. So the winner of the group rides, they give you like tires and tubes, yeah. all this bunch of stuff, power bar. <laughs> That's what they give us. So I, I told my friend, uh, man, all I needed to know is where the finish line is. He's like, what's mean the finish line, man? You can't even, you haven't even been training anything. Why you want to know the finish line? So the only thing I need to know, and who is the guy I need to follow? So he told me, Ivan Franco. That's the guy who wins all the time. Yeah. I was like, all right. I know who the guy I need to follow. I just needed to tell me when it's like 1K to go. The coach like, it's 1K to go. So I get behind Ivan Franco. And he went so hard. He was a professional at that point. Wow. But, you know, coming to the finish line, you know, I just passed him on top of the line. He was so mad because, you know, he didn't know where I come from. <laughs> Man, that is funny, dude. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. So you're, you, when, when did you start, did you know right away that you were, you were good, you were going to be good? I mean, did you have that feeling? There's some folks that, you know, they work at, they have to work, work, work at it. And there's other folks that are like, okay, this is what I was meant to do. Uh, I think the difference between, it's not like I, I knew that I was good. Always being smart, I went to a stop training. That's, that's something a lot of athletes do not know. You have to know when's the time that you need a rest. And that's something that I always focus. I, everybody just focus on train, 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 train. Yes, and they forget about rest. And that's where you get burned out and you're starting to hate the sport. It doesn't matter what sport it is. Yeah. I always be smart about how I train mm-hmm. and when it was time for me to stop training. Wow. I think that's very wise, especially if you're young, because most folks, just like you said, they want to pound it out and just keep going, going, yes. going. And I did that when I was 
in Atlanta and I went to college 18, 19, I overtrained two winners in a row and I was just, I was just going miles, miles, miles. And I just yes. blew just bad. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. Well, uh, with a lot of athletes in any sport, like since I was young, like I trained like crazy because I trained like crazy. And then I stopped training when it's time I needed to stop because I know my body. I was like, I, it's time to rest and I rest. I come back and train like hard as I can again because yeah. you know I had I had done a lot of crazy stuff on training you know like when I was like 13 years old I was like I want to see if I can do 260 kilometers I just jumped in my bike and just went my mom was going crazy you know she was <laughs> yeah 260k <laughs> are you kidding me okay 62 62 that's about four. Holy Lord, and you were 13? Yes. Dude, you're crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like my, my, my mom almost was like, you know, take my bike away because I disappeared. I was like. <laughs> yeah? Did you ride off the island? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. So I just wanted to see what I can do. And a lot of times I had done that, you know, like I want to do, you know, I want to do like nine hour days. And, you know, I want to do like five hours in the morning. I want to do four hours in the afternoon. Wow. I had, I had done that a million times. So when I want to be, I say, in 2005, because I've been racing, I've been winning a bunch of races in Florida and everything. Yeah. But I feel like I feel I have uh, things to accomplish. You said like, you know, I want to be a professional cyclist. Yeah. Everybody was like, well, it's kind of impossible to do it when you work. And cycling at the same time, it's not enough time. I was like, we all have times. So I used to work out four o'clock in the morning, riding the train for like an hour and a half, go to work, come back, ride my bicycle again, and then just jump in the rollers again like for another hour. So I used to pull a four hour, four and a half every day, even when I was still working. Wow. Yeah. You were not, you were determined. Yes, yes. And I still, I still, I still determined to like, you know, I'm 41 years old right now. I still like training and still, you know, winning races at the, here in the U.S. at the highest level. Oh, hell so, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what was your first, so you were here in Florida where you, you were on an amateur team. You were winning quite a bit. Yes. What was your most memorable win in, in Florida as an amateur? I don't know. To, to, to be honest, in 2003, I won 13 races back to back to back. Jesus. Yes. Okay. I bow down. <laughs> because that's 13 races in one season period, even as an amateur, is some tough shit. Yeah, yeah. No, I won it back to back to back. So we had this professional race in West Palm Beach. All those big professional guys came, and you know, you know, you know the how the hey love relationship that officials and oh, yeah. fans how were you when you started winning a lot of races? You know, oh, yeah. they want people to beat you. Yeah. So all these pro guys came, like a big professional guy, you know, Ivan Dominguez, like you know, all the Saturn guys, uh, all those guys from uh, Navigator came, uh, seven all, and the officials was like, well, let's see, you can win this one too. I got second. One of the reasons why I got second was because the guy pushed me to the fence. Yeah, the guy pushed me all the way to the fence. I hit the fence, I hit back, so I had no enough space to, to pass. Yeah. That's the only reason, that's the only reason why, why I lost that race. And I'm mean, really mad about it that I didn't want that race just because of that. It yeah. not, was not because he, it was because they pushed me to the fence. Wow. When did when did you turn pro and talk? Were you on were you on the team with your? I always mess his name up. Yosvani Falcone. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, I turned professional in two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yosvani, I don't know where Yosvani Falcone was. He was in different team. Yosvani joined the team in two thousand seven. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, how did you guys do? It was a small team. Who was on that team? Uh, just Bonnie Falcon wasn't there. Chris Frederick, he was the one that, that pretty much 
start the team from scratch from the Jamie's years and I don't know since I remember it was Jamie's yeah we used Jamie, we used Jamie's uh the first three years of the thing yeah how'd you guys yeah. do how'd you guys do were you because you guys were all you guys were pretty much all over the place yes 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 well my biggest goal when I turned professional was to win a race a super week Super Weeks in those years were the biggest events that was happening in the U.S. at that point. Yeah. Uh, that's, that was the race I actually wanted, that I want to be a professional cyclist. Because we went there in 2004. I mean, like, I was in the back of the group all day long. I, I started with two water bottles. I never touched my water bottles because I feel I take it off my hands out of the handlebars. I'm going to get dropped. Wow. And this is me coming from, you know, winning races left and right in Florida. Yeah. So go, going, going to that race, I was like, oh, this is this, uh, this a different level. So I told my friends, like, one day I just come to come here and I don't going to win the whole team, but I want to win a stage here. Yeah. And I came back in 2006 and I went, ended on the breakaway with like two mid ranks. I don't know if you remember that professional team from Germany. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two, two mid rank uh, riders and two other riders. We ended on the breakaway. So we led, we led the field. And I was like, all right, now I need to be smart. Yeah. Now I just need to follow who's the fast guy, who's the guy, this fast guy. Yeah. I know I don't, have, I don't have enough power to come around for a long way, but I just had to wait until like, he feel he can win, and then I'm going to come around the guy, and that's how I won the first uh, professional race. Wow! That was so super week. The a race there was your first professional win. Uh, the, the calling professional, professional, maybe, because I won this race uh, 2003. That I beat uh, Roberto Gascioli. Ah, oh, Roberto Robert. Gascioli, yeah. Woo! Good sprinter. <laughs> yes, yes. In 2003. Uh, I, I'm, I'm probably that was my first one, but you know, the one, the ones I really I remember that the one I actually wanted to win, yeah, was that we was that race in Super Week. Okay, so yeah. let me ask you this me being from the Midwest, I'm born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so I've, I've grown up knowing Super Week, okay, Super Week. okay, Wisconsin, of course, so. Can you explain to people, for someone who is from a different part of the country coming to race that race, how big and important Super Week was? No, Super Week was, I don't know, the Tour de France of the U.S. at yes, this sir. point, you know. Super Week was like what it is to uh, Tour of California. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, like, that was, it was a, a, a big deal for everybody. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, did you always know you were going to be, you were a sprinter? No, uh, you know, I, who, I was a star as a time trialist. Wow. Because that's pretty much what I was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming race criteria in the U.S. I never raced criteria before. All we do was road race and some track. Yeah. But what, the only thing I raced in the track was a uh, Pulsu and Team Pulsu. I don't race any. I don't race anything else before. Wow. So, yes. So was it? I, so, was it? Was it eye opening for you to come and do the crits? Was it adjustment? Oh yeah. No, yeah. This is. Uh, it's a bit different. It's yeah. It is. You know, like going to turn crazy and fighting for the corners, and you know, you have to be in the right position with like ten lap to go. It's not. No, you not be able to move out to the front. And the road is a little different. You know. Yeah. You can be like five kids to go. You can still be in the middle of the pack. You can still move out to the front. If you have the right, if you have the right combination, you can actually like move easy to the front. And the crits is hard. Yeah, very true. Yeah. How many, how, let me ask you, what, would, what do you prefer? Do you prefer crits or track or, or road? Uh, nowadays, I just uh, prefer uh, crits. Yes. Well, you got the you got the nerves of steel because I've seen you race so many yeah. times. So I, I have to say your adjustment was pretty damn good. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I, I still pretty, but like cornering and stuff like that. Like 
like I always told everybody, you know, because uh, what happened with Chris, the, a lot of good writers uh, fail to adjust to the crit because they, they go too crazy at the beginning of the crit and then just blow out. And it's kind of hard to recover in the crit. Yep. Yeah. So I tell everybody, you just, you just need a way the first 15, 20 minutes of the race. And after that, you know, whoever can be in the front will be in the front. Whoever can be in the front will be at the back. Yeah. That's a simple way of looking at it, but it's obviously worked for you. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Um, tell me this. How, what teams were you on uh, pro-wise? Well, I was uh, out of space, Toshiba. Yep. Uh, Jamie's Real Cyclist. And it's, it's my stop. Yeah. What was your favorite team so far? Uh, out of space. Uh, the thing out of space was, was a, a, a family team. Yeah. yeah. You guys really clicked, huh? Yes, yes. Well, it was different. It was no, uh, you know, every other thing I feel like it was our business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, out of space was more, more the family stuff, you know, like, we 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 were raised uh, as a family, no as a thing, you know, this is your job, this is what you need to do. What mm -hmm. was not that way, you know. Everybody knew what they're supposed to do and they just love to do what they were what they were doing. Yeah. When did you when did you move to Athens, Georgia? Now I know you're married, you've got a couple of kids. Congratulations, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> but when did you yeah, today's uh, when did you yeah. make that decision to go to Athens? Uh two thousand six. Uh I feel like, you know, I need to be closer to, to the races. You know, Miami is too far away for, for anything. Mm -hmm. you know, Miami is too far away. Uh, and, you know, I need a train where it has some hills and I have a little more terrain to actually, like, ride my bicycle than just making loops and keep skin. Yeah. yeah. You were going to say something. Today is what? Uh, today's my uh, little one's birthday. Well, I want to say happy birthday to him, all right? Happy birthday, <laughs> little one. Uh, you got a cool dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you, okay. So, you're in Athens. When did you decide that you were, you were going to retire from being a pro, but you still race? Yes. Uh, 20, I don't remember, 2013, 2014. And I just got fed up with... Uh, the lines of the management of professional cycling, you know. They just lie to all the young guys. Huh? The young guys just buy all the lie because they have a dream, you know. Yeah. They, they always had this dream that they just want to be, I don't know, the next Lance Santro, the next Mark Cavendish type of thing when the reality it's not going to happen, you know. That's, you know, we only have one, one Lance, we only have one Mike Cavendish, you know. Not everybody can be Mike Cavendish, not everybody can be Lance Santro, you know. Not everybody can be this big pro name, you know. It's, you know, you have like maybe like 10 of those guys, and, you know. You don't have more than that. Yeah. And we have like thousands of cyclists. So they, they like to all these young guys and, uh, you know, I was, I was getting old and I, I really didn't want to be part of that crap no more. Yeah. So I was like, I love the sport, you know. I had the support. I still have company that support me. And I have people that still supporting me. You know, I still like really good cyclists. And yeah. I can just race and enjoy the sport without that bunch of stuff that I need to put out with all the other pro cycling things that I was like, ah, and just walk away. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Um, you, did you ever have thoughts of ever going to Europe? I wanted to go there when I was John. I actually filled out the paperwork to go to Beijing in 2003, 2002. They want to go there. But they were asking for, you know, I was supposed to bring some amount of money to there because it's not like you just go, you have to buy in, you know. Really? 
talk to me. Yeah, you pretty much. Yeah, you pretty much have to buy in. It's not like you just go and they just like you and pick you, you know. And, and, and especially, you know, I, I hate to say it because, uh, you know, the, the, in the time of the year that we are, we're in 2021, we'll be fighting for Allah for this, but, you know, the people that just look like us, you know, like, they're, you know, yeah. they don't really like, you know, they don't say it, but they don't really like us, you know. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. No, you know, you know how it is. You know. yeah. it's, I don't like to say it because it feels like I put a negative into myself. And that's something I was like, eh, whatever, you know, I would just want to keep room, everybody wrong day in and day out because. That's, that's not a negative, I, man. If that's your, if that's your yeah. truth, then that's what it is, bro. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, I see that you still race track. You're at the East uh, Point Velodrome, and I, I've spent from 90 to 96, I was there racing. Uh, you may know a guy by the name of Tommy Mulkey. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he lives in Athens. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. I, I known Tommy. I was racing there, and uh, I see that you still get to the track. That's, it's really impressive. No, yeah, I, I do track most as a, you know, to remember what I uh, was like the old days. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty much what I do, what, what I do track. Uh, actually, I stay away from the track for like 10 years. Why? And then I, I don't know. I just was concentrating so much on racing growth and stuff like that. So how I get back to the track, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Chad, he, he's a track rider. So he raced at a track. Now me and him were just starting, you know, just being teammates, just saying a bunch of crap back and forth. So I was like, man, I got to go back to the track, I got to beat you in the track. He's like, come to the track. So <laughs> I just went, bought a, a track bike, and just went to a track. And wow. for, for, funny story was because my wife was like, are you not going to go to the track? I was like, hey, it's a 333 track. You know, it will be with no more. Hey, it's going back to my... I went, I went to the track, man. Like, the first thing I did was the 200-meter fly. I hit turn four. I ended on the top of the track. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah, you've been away for a while. <laughs> I was like, oh... Well, I ain't throwing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, well, you know, like, one of the reasons I went back there because I, I told him I got to be him in the, in the pursuit. That's uh, because, you know, that's something that always called natural to me. Yeah. So I raised that night and, you know, I was getting uh, comfortable and comfortable. So the next day, uh, that's when we did uh, the pursuit. And I, I beat him, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I won the pursuit, and I won the, uh, the you know, we were racing the state championship. Yeah. So I won the state championship in there. I was like, All right, I, get, I guess I get that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Damn. <laughs> so when, when did you decide that you were going to start racing? You've done some masters racing, too. No, the, the only do the only master race I had done is in Panama. That's right. That's right. That's you just you just were down there not too long ago. Yeah, that's the only master race I had done. Uh, the reason why I started to do that master race is a thirty plus. It is because that in the years that they had the race, mm -hmm. the thirty plus was the race. The, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the pro race only had like ten riders. So I, I was like, I don't go to race with 10 riders, you know, you know. So that's the only race I had done, uh, master for five years. That won the last five years of that race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this. So do you like racing down there? Because I know, because th the series is like it's in Panama, then there's some Puerto Rico stuff. Do you, how do you like the racing down there? Well, the only race I don't uh, do is uh, Panama. Oh, okay. Uh, I haven't okay. done any other any other those races now panama is cool and like i think the one the reason why i did it too because i have i was never 
in Panama before. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it's a, it's a cool uh, time to go and visit. And I love the, you know, and I love how the promoters do the race. The people down there, they're, they're like super nice, man. Like that is something, you know, they close the, well, the highways every Sunday from four o'clock in the morning to noon. Wow. Just for, just for cyclists to like ride. Wow. Okay, so uh, t tell me if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Does your wife run a race series down in South Carolina? Is she a part of the race series? Yeah, she used to. Uh, well, not 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 anymore. But she used to be the one in charge of uh, building the Athens Twilight. Yeah, criteria. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm part of the USA Crit. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. What does what does Athens Twilight mean to you? No, man, it, it's like a hey, this uh hey love relationship, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. I heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I think this year was the first year that I got like a clean run to the mm -hmm. race, and mm -hmm. I I was not lucky enough to end it out in the breakaway. Well, not lucky enough. Not like people soon I moved, they chased me down. Everybody moved, nobody chasing anybody down. So I was like, come on, guys, I know a guy. Come on, let me go. <laughs> yeah. but, well, they, they, they knew, so I was not able to, like, end it on the breakaway. Uh, you know, I've been, like, third place four times in that race. Yep. Never be able to, like, win it. Or, you know, That's got to be frustrating. No, it it kind of is, especially, like, one time uh, I get, like, third, three in a row. It was like third, third, third. Come on. <laughs> when am I going to get that win? Yeah, but, uh, okay. Maybe next year. Always next year. <laughs> oh, I think you will. I'm putting it down here. I think you can win it next year. All right? Okay, so I've noticed something, and I'm going to give you shit for it. Um, I noticed that you've been doing some modeling. And, uh, on, on, yeah, you, oh, man, you know I'm about to give you some help for this one because you're the most beautiful Cuban in America on a bicycle because I see you everywhere. So <laughs> when did you decide that you're going to be, you're going to ride the runway, my brother? <laughs> well, I, I, have some, I, I, have some, I have done some work. You know, I have, you know, back in the day, you did like so for Louis Garnell and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, the <laughs> pandemic came. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna put it on the pandemic, huh? Nice job, yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The first time I saw it, I said, "Look at yeah. this motherfucker right here." <laughs> I was like, "He really do." And then I saw it again. I was like, "This motherfucker." He really taking this. Set. All right, all right. I see, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how how did you get into that, and and how long you been doing it? No, no. This this was just a uh, a a last year this year type of thing. Uh, you know, I guess uh, a a friend of mine that is a photographer for Cebelo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we just got together. And he sent he sent some pictures to them. I guess they they like it. They want, they want, uh, uh, they don't want this, uh, no more cycling model no more. You know how nobody used to be, you know, the European super skinny type of thing. Yes, sir. They want, they want people just to look like everybody else. They want some color. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So tell me this. Exactly. Who, who are your, who are your sponsors now? I mean, you, you talked about that. You've got some folks that still, you know, support you. I know that Cervello, cause boy, I tell you. If I yes. see you around me at, at the next race and you happen to lead that bike around, bro, man, you're going to see me in a man <laughs> that bike. Because damn, that bike is beautiful, man. So, so yes, that is, is one of your sponsors? Yes, the brother's one of my sponsors, yes. Yes. Who else is sponsoring you? Uh, Cebelo, Velocio Clothing is one of my sponsors. Uh, Excel. Excel is a... Uh, it's a clinic from Miami. It's a small company that uh, owned by a friend of mine. His name is uh, he raced too. His name is uh, Roslan Rivera. Mm -hmm. Everybody call him everybody call him Machete <laughs> from down there. From yeah, from down from uh, Miami. No. Uh, City Bike. Yeah, City Bike is uh, not my sponsor. Really? Uh, yes. 
Wow. So are, I, I, I'm not asking you, but I'm not in your pocket. So I'm not asking you for your money. Yeah. But so you don't have to work. You can just ride. No, I still work. I still do some work for a bunch of friends of mine uh, that I do some construction work, stuff like that. He just like, uh, he always call me when he, he, he needs something to, yeah. to build because, you know, he, he always come with these uh, uh, great ideas that he wants to build. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, he, and, you know, I, I feel obligated to like uh, do the work, you know. I, I had time to work and ride my bicycle, stuff like that. Yeah. So how was the last couple of questions? I know you're a busy man. Uh, I'm going to throw out some quick shots at you. Okay. Yes. So I want to see what you say. First, I would be, I would say is, um, if there was a place in this world that you could ride your bike, unlimited time, unlimited budget, where would you ride? Athens. Wow. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. Damn. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. If there was a place that you could live anywhere in this world, where would you live? Athens. God, dog. This dude is two for two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, now, like, and, you know, I, I've been around. I've been around. Like, you know, Aspen is beautiful. Yeah. And like, I used to spend. I used to spend all the, uh, a lot of the summers out there. Yeah. And I love the place and everything. But I don't know, it's, uh, it's feel fake. It's, it's feel fake to me, uh, you know. A lot of places, they are beautiful, they, but to me, it's, uh, I feel like, you know, I don't belong there, it's feel like fake to me. Yeah. Here in Athens, you know, especially here, you know, everywhere you go ride a bicycle and everybody see you riding the bike, right away they ask you about the Tour de France. They associate anything with cycling with the Tour de France. Here in Athens, just somewhere where you come from, you ride a bicycle, yeah. you stop in a coffee shop, and everybody will ask you, do you race the Athens twilight? You know. I like that. Yes. So it's, they don't ask you about the Tour de France or any of this kind of stuff. They ask you about this race. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is a college town. It's called people from all over the country. And they are not, the majority of the people that know even from here. Yeah. They come from from outside, that's pretty much what they know about. It. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. Last couple of questions. Um, if there is anybody that you could ride with, uh, friend, family, professional, if there's anybody, who would you do a, a good, easy coffee ride with? Uh, probably Van Domingos. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, me, me and him, we can talk for hours, man. <laughs> yeah. That's my and we, dude. Can, we, and we, yeah, and we can talk pretty much about everything. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yes. Okay. Um, this is the last one. Uh, I'm, yeah, this is going to be the last one here. If, is there anything that you would want people to know about Frank Travieso that people don't know? Do you have a... Do you have a special talent that people do not know? Uh, I don't know. I don't know can, can, can you juggle? Is. Can you juggle? Can, <laughs> can you break dance? No, I cannot juggle. I cannot break dance uh, whatsoever. <laughs> I, 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 can build, I can build pretty much anything. Wow. Okay. So you're good with wood and stuff like that? Yeah, I can build pretty much like a building. I want to build a building too. Like, yes. I can build a bit from the bottom to the top. Damn. All right. I need yeah. something built. I'm calling Frank Travieso. You know, I'm call that, man. He got time. Now, yeah. you, did, you heard him on here. He said he got time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Frank, I want to say thank you, man, because uh, I, my wife knows I'm a big fan, um, and I'm older than you. And yeah. I, I've just, ever since I got to meet you, you were always just very cool with me, and I just really appreciated that. And I just want to say thank you for giving me the time to talk to you and get to know you more and other people also that will hear this. Um, just, I want to say prayers to the family and happy birthday to the young one. Thank you. You got yes, it, sir. man. And when yes. I see you, when, when's the next time you think you'll be down in Miami? Uh, we'll be there for Thanksgiving. Oh, you will? All right. Yes. I might are you going, you're, obviously, you're going to ride, correct? Yes, I'm uh, probably going to do the race. They have a track race, the 20th. And, uh, yep. yep. 
I will be there. Okay. I will. I will, I will be there. We, I will see you. I'm covering yeah. it actually. So I will definitely. <laughs> oh, nice. Good. I, yay. <laughs> okay. Yes, I, 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 I'm coming to that race. You got but it. It's been, it's been a while. Yes. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been in that track, but okay. I will be there. Okay. I will see you then. All right. Yes, sir. All right, man. Take care and stay blessed. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. All right.